electrons can be in different principal energy levels around the nucleus. Um, the lower principal energy levels, like principal energy level one, uh, will be closer to the nucleus. And the higher principal energy levels, like principal energy level two and three, uh, are further from the nucleus. And as they get further from the nucleus, they have increasing potential energy. Uh, so uh, there are principal energy levels, uh, and within those there are sublevels. Like within principal energy level two, there's the 2s sublevel and the 2p sublevel. And within sublevels, there are atomic orbitals. They are these boxes. Now, ultimately, uh, these atomic orbitals are places where electrons tend to kind of move around, uh, and uh, they might have a certain shape that they move around in, like whether the, they might be spherical or dumbbell or uh, more complex shapes for uh, DNF. And uh, these, uh, the positions of these orbitals might be uh, in the X or the Y or the Z axis. Um, so uh, each of these orbitals shows a different kind of position and shape uh, and uh, energy of electrons orbiting around the nucleus. So uh, let's say that we had hydrogen. How many electrons would be in an atom of that? Well, its atomic number is one, so it has one proton. And so if we have an atom of that, then it will have one electron as well. Uh, just as many protons and, as electrons gives no overall charge, i.e. that's an atom, not an ion. So where would one electron tend to go? Uh, which of these is the most stable place for an electron to end up in? It's in the lowest energy position. Um, that's where uh, an electron might tend to spend most of its time unless uh, it were to absorb energy briefly and then fall back down. So. Uh, if there were just one electron, because we had hydrogen, then it would be in the 1s subshell, and we could write its electron configuration, like its code to show where the electrons are, as 1s1. Uh, we're saying there's one electron in the 1s subshell. Um, and then, uh, what if we had helium? Its atomic number is 2, and so it would have two electrons. Now, those uh, would both go into this 1s uh, subshell. Uh, they would go into the lowest energy of all of these uh, positions. And so, um, <clears throat> these electrons would have opposite spins. Uh, one would be sort of up, and one would be down. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we can show the spin uh, using the up or down arrows. Um, so uh, please note that we've followed two rules in writing this electron configuration of helium 1s2. Uh, first, we followed off bows principle. This says that electrons fill the lowest energy orbitals first. And so here they fill from the bottom, because as we go up, we have increasing potential energy. And then we also followed the Pauli exclusion principle. So that says there can be up to two electrons of opposite spins, one up, one down, or one clockwise and one counterclockwise. Um, only two electrons can fit into each orbital. And so uh, moving on to another element, uh, let's try lithium. What is the electron configuration of lithium? Well, its atomic number is three, so it's got three protons and three electrons. Uh, where will they go? Well, the first two will go into the 1s subshell, and they'll be of opposite spins, one up, one down. And the next one will go, pause and figure it out. Okay, the next one will go to 2s. Uh, yeah, that is the second lowest position. Um, so. To write the electron configuration, like the code for where the electrons are, we'd say there's two electrons in the 1s, so it's 1s2. And there's also one electron in the 2s subshell, 2s1. All right, uh, next, what if we had uh, carbon? Uh, that would have six electrons. 
uh, its atomic number is 6. And so uh, we would put two electrons into the 1s and then two electrons into the 2s and then an electron into this orbital, that's five, and now add one more. The next one will go not in that orbital, but in one of the other orbitals. Um, this is according to Hund's rule. Hund's rule says that electrons in the same sublevel will spread out into different orbitals before being paired up. Yep. Uh, so it's kind of like if you go onto a city bus, you're going to sit in a, in a different seat than a stranger. You're not going to pair up when there's equally good seats nearby. Uh, so the electron configuration of carbon then would be 1s2, because there's two electrons in 1s, and 2s2, there's two electrons in 2s, and then there's two electrons in 2p, so 2p2. And then finally, uh, what if we had neon? Oh, that one's special. That's a happy element, a noble gas. It's got 10 electrons. So uh, fill in 2 into the 1s, 2 into the 2s, then number 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, we're going to fill each of these orbitals with two electrons before filling up the 3s. All right, so this is really kind of nice. Uh, principal energy level 2 is entirely full. We have a full principal energy level. Uh, this is a noble gas configuration. And this is very stable. Uh, this is likely uh, to uh, end up staying like this for a while. It's not likely to gain electrons or lose electrons. It is very stabilizing to have uh, 2s and 2p filled. All of principal energy level 2 filled. Turns out that these end up being slightly lower in energy if they're all filled. Uh, and so um, that would give the lowest energy configuration the most stability. Um, so neon is very stable. It is a noble gas, unlikely to react. Uh, just like helium, that also had the outermost principal energy level entirely full. Principal energy level one was full, so helium is also noble gas, won't really react with anything. If you breathe it into your lungs, it won't really react with anything, although uh, you will kind of have a funny voice. All right. So. Uh, we care about electron configurations because uh, this stability that we gain uh, from gaining or lose el losing electrons is the reason that we might have chemical reactions. So let's say that we had just uh, five uh, electrons, uh, then uh, we might tend to get one more. Uh, fluorine, which has nine, uh, might tend to get one more and have a total of 10 electrons. Fluorine tends to gain an electron and be just the same electron configuration as neon and noble gas. Um, similarly, uh, sodium will tend to lose uh, an electron. Uh, it might normally have this electron configuration, and then if it loses it, then it has the same electron configuration as neon. And so uh, elements will gain or lose electrons to get stability. Uh, or they'll share electrons to get stability. That's uh, kind of um, electron configurations is the point and, and reason for all of that. So let's say that we had the question, how many unpaired electrons are in carbon? Uh, so here was our electron configuration of carbon. Even though there's an even number of electrons, there are two, four, six electrons, they're not all paired up. Here, these two electrons are not paired up. They're in different orbitals. So there end up being two unpaired electrons in carbon.